Uh, yes, just a, a few uh, hanging points I'll try to do quickly. Uh, one is uh, we've been talking about this issue of skepticism and uh, some have done denial. I just want to very quickly put in perspective, there's no such thing as a good scientist who's not a skeptic. I began my career thinking that dust and cooling was more likely than warming, found out what was wrong with it, and as very, I'm very proud to have published first what was wrong with my own ideas. We evolve our ideas on the basis of evidence. A denier is someone who does not admit the preponderance of evidence based upon the overwhelming amount that's out there. That is exactly what IPCC and National Academy of Science does, is it convenes teams to assess preponderance, because individuals are not very good at assessing risk by itself. That's the what can happen, what are the odd parts. Our job in society is risk management, uh, how to deal with it. Uh, number two is I, I am disappointed that, uh, that Congresswoman Blackburn left because she made a statement that I hear all the time when I get these angry emails, well, you're just in it for the money. So uh, what really is frustrating to those of us who do this is that if our strategy were to get money, then the last thing we're going to say is that it's unequivocal that there's warming and very likely that humans are responsible for most of the last 50 years, because then you don't need us. Then you're now making risk management judgments. What we'd say is we don't know anything, fund us to do it. So not only are we being accused of dishonesty, but we're also being accused of being pretty dumb. So what we do is separate out the relative components we know well from the others. And it is not at all about, uh, about getting grants. That's just simply a, a political statement I would love to discuss with the Congresswoman. Also, uh, Congressman um, Sensenbrenner made the comment that climate scientists uh, are very frustrated and had inappropriate attempts to control things. Well, yeah, they were very frustrated. They were a tiny minority of scientists and their frustrations were never acted on by the IPCC. But for those people who claim it's only climate scientists who expressed human emotions of frustration, why don't they just simply release the so-called uh, climate skeptics all their interchanges of their own emails over the last 10 years and let the public decide uh, which of them have been more strategic in their plans. And until they do that, their accusations have no merit, whatever. Uh, and finally, uh, I wanted to come out and say from the committee's perspective, uh, in the conversation that uh, Congressman Cleaver was talking about, about air pollution, and everybody agreed that getting the pollutants which are health threatening out of cities is a good idea. Well, some of those pollutants are generated by inefficient processes. So let's look for co-benefits and win-wins. And obviously in the legislation that you've been involved in, you're trying to find those elements where solving one problem also help to reduce CO2 emissions so that you can solve both at once at relatively lower cost. It's a very, very good operating principle. And the final thing is the question of civil dialogue. For a very, very long time, there was an unwritten social contract between science and, and society, especially the Congress, where again, our job was risk. What could happen, what are the odds? And your job is, is what to do about it. And this water gets muddied by the, the, the people who don't see preponderance, by the statements of uh, attributing to people that they're doing it for money or other kinds of things. So then what happens is it becomes a political story and the risk part and the risk management part get lost in the middle. The public is confused. And unfortunately, that's the state that we're in now. And I appreciate the opportunity to try to see if we can get that restoration of civility and the separation of function between the science job of risk and the public policy job of risk management. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Schneider.